Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this really exciting talk by Mateusz uh, from Noctolica in Poland. They are a very young company but doing really, really exciting work on the next generation, on the third and the fourth generation of OLED uh, TAT emitter systems. And they're working on both PVD versions and also inkjet printable versions. And I'm delighted that uh, Mateusz will be sharing some of the latest results uh, with us today. So as usual, uh, the stage will be yours, Matthews. You have 18 to 20 minutes. I will give you a notice two minutes before the end of your presentation. And then we will ask all the questions from the audience live. So the audience, please don't be shy writing your questions in the uh, chat on the left hand side, on the right hand side, and we'll get them all answered. So yeah, over to you and uh, you may start. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me and having us over. As uh, Introduced, my name is Mateusz Nowak and I'm a CEO, CCO of Noctiluca. We are designers and producers of new generation of OLED materials. Uh, just a quick background of where we come from. Uh, we are a company from European Union with one of the most dynamic economic growths uh, in the last 30 years globally. Uh, Poland has excellent STEM education, making our talent pool readily available to us. Um, and moreover, comp uh, the company itself is built on over a decade of experiences in chemical uh, CRO that the founders of Noctilukta built before. Um, they've worked for tier one multinational conglomerates. I choose Noctiluca's focus, which I believe is quite unique in the market, is very much industry oriented and client centric. Uh, based uh, on that, we strongly we are strongly woven into the fabric of international uh, scientific community. But uh, let me get to the the question uh, that we all have been asking: uh, What are these emitters, and what are they needed for? And Emitters are at the heart of every OLED, and they're responsible for much of its performance potential. Uh, emitters are chemical compounds that are synthesized in the lab, and there are numerous issues with them. The most prominent one is simply the lack of blue emitter of new generation. The industry today is using materials invented in early 90s, early 2000s, or even 2010s. Um, why this is so big of an issue? Remember the time that you took a walk after dark uh, lately? When looking around, many of the windows glowed in blue. Yes, blue emitter is responsible for 70% of light emission from OLED devices. Companies like UDC, uh, who were pioneers uh, have done a fantastic job in setting uh, the path to create the industry. Um, and they did what they could uh, with the available technology from a decade or two decades ago. Now, follow, following their leadership, we, Noctiluca, are studying these problems, including high cost, use of heavy metals, and overall, overall limited energy efficiency, among others. Uh, let me present you a more scientific view on the issues and the differences between different generations. Let's look at the mechanisms of operation of the emitters of each generation. Here you have the first generation emitters acting on the basis of the fluorescence mechanism. In the emission layer, an electron meets a hole and they recombine, exciting the molecule of emitter. One of the four molecules excites to a singlet state from which it can return to a singlet ground state by emitting a quantum of light. The other three molecules, excited to the triplet state, are stuck at this level, unable to emit light, so they slowly lose their excitation energy. The second generation of emitters acts according to the phosphorescence mechanism. This generation can emit light from the triplet states, thanks to two effects called inter-system crossing and spin-orbit coupling. These effects are available only for emitters containing heavy metals, but allows to utilize all excited molecules. And finally, 